as it possibly can be. Honourable John Banks. I rise to oppose this bill with lowercase narrative. It seems rather interesting, doesn't it? And I don't seek to be churlish to remind this House that I was the only member of this House that voted against recreational drugs in this country. And yet we hear tonight about the sovereign rights of every nation to protect its citizens. And I don't disagree with that. And I would have thought those many weeks ago there was a sovereign right for this House to protect its young people around Sunday recreational drugs. But we'll leave that aside. I'm not unhappy that this bill is going to a select committee, but it's an exercise in rain dancing in the early stages of election year. That's what it is, an exercise in rain dancing. It'll make members feel good that we've achieved something this week in this parliament for the people and exercised our sovereign right as a nation. We want plain packaging of tobacco, but we allow alcohol to be advertised on TV tonight. I thank the former Minister of Health. And I give praise and thanks to her colleague now at the United Nations because Phil Goff and I remember well ten parliaments ago sitting in the aeroplane at seven o'clock in the morning, flying to Wellington with most of the people up front chain-smoking cigarettes. <laughs> and we did. We, we sat in rows A and B in the smoke-free section of Air New Zealand. And, of course, uh, <laughs> we got to Wellington and we all smelt like ashtrays. And no one could believe that Phil had started smoking, not even Mike Moore, who never smoked, by the way, at least not in an aeroplane. <laughs> so we got these deaths last year from tobacco, but alcohol causes much more harm than tobacco. And I suppose for a wowser it's easy for me to say that, but I'm opposed to both alcohol consumption and tobacco use. But they're both available at the corner dairy and they're both legal products sold by legal entities into a market of free enterprise. We want to ban tobacco advertising, uh, but what are we doing about it really? We're introducing a bill in early election year so that we can feel good about taking a stance against tobacco addiction with mainly our young people and the harm that it causes. But this won't see the light of day until the next parliamentary term. And I think if this country was committed and the parliamentarians supporting this legislation, they'd ram it through the House in the dead of night and put it on the books. But we're not doing that. We're not doing that. And so I see this as um, a very interesting exercise in futility. But I want to say to the Minister, Tariana Turia, what a great soul she is and what a fine Member of Parliament and a great ambassador for her people. And she's done a very good job in extending the work of previous Ministers of Health in getting rid of tobacco in this country. And I am looking forward to 2025 to 2025 when this country is tobacco free and we will see flying across this parliament pigs and that's okay because I won't be anywhere near this place but the point I'm making is if we really want to get to the bottom of tobacco addiction in this country mainly amongst the young the international evidence is increasing the price substantially increasing the price substantially is the single biggest initiative we could take and if this government wanted to take that initiative by doubling the excise duty on tobacco over the next five years I would support that. No one dislikes smoking more than me. Idleness, educational failure and despair drive the take up of smoking with so many of our young. Idleness, educational failure and despair. You can see it in the eyes of the people that consume these products on the streets of this country every day of the week. So we should address the underlying cause of the deep vein of dep deprivation. For many smoking, it is merely a symptom of that. 
the causes of the deep vein of social deprivation. I congratulate the Minister again. I need to put that on record. However, I ask my Māori and National Party colleagues to carefully consider the precedent they will set with this bill. This bill guts the intellectual property rights of tobacco companies. And someone will say, well, who cares? But do we want to gut the intellectual property rights of KFC or Red Bull sugar drinks? Because KFC and Red Bull sugar drinks are putting this country's level of obese up at the top of the OECD. And they help to contribute that. Now, it may be seen as a long bow, but the intellectual property rights of tobacco companies and the names and brandings of their products without compensation, without compensation is wrong because which international company selling products that are bad for our health will be the next target? The state is effectively seizing their property because this House doesn't like health effects on their still lawful business. It's still a lawful business. If a member wants to bring a bill into this House to ban tobacco, that would be an honourable proposition because it then would be an illegal activity. But successive governments have reaped massive benefits from excise duty on tobacco products. It's a fundamental tenet of our common law that citizens should not be denied their property rights without just compensation. You wouldn't let it happen to the neighbour in your street if the local council was just as cavalier with their seizure of some of the property on your front garden. It's a property right. It's a property right. I know the opposition don't talk about property rights. This is the parliamentary opposition that goes to Dot Con's mansion and tells him that if they become the government, he won't be extradited to the US. And so it's all very well. It's all very well. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I know it hit a raw nerve. They might have to rush out and have a smoke. I know it had a raw nerve. The House should not do this. The common law is not only the gift of our British forebears, but also Maori who believe in a country under the rule of law where property was rightfully protected. And we will have debates in this parliament this month, next month, into the next 10 years about property rights for the indigenous people of this country. And the property right for the indigenous people of this country is the same as the property right for international companies lawfully trading in a lawful product in this nation. Now, I say again, no one dislikes smoking more than me. So I say to the Greens, what about an SOP to this bill at some stage where you double the price of tobacco over the next five years, which will have an effect? He's going to propose that. And of course, we're waiting for the Aussies. We're waiting for the Aussies. If we really believed that banning advertising on cigarette packets in the local dairy was going to fix the problem of the uptake of smoking with young people, predominantly young Maori women in particular, then why don't we pass it through all its stages tonight? The point of principle is that it's tough to apply in hard cases. The pain and loss caused by tobacco use is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. The pain and loss caused by tobacco is heartbreaking. This is a battle of the lawyers on freedom of expression. The second principle is that we should protect the freedom of expression of which the names of products, their branding and intellectual property are part. And if we don't like it, then increase the price of tobacco over the next five years by 100% use the money that we raise to buy the property rights of the international tobacco companies and get rid of them forever and become smoke-free in 2018. What a good thing that would be. And I would support it. And I would support it. But I note that my friend the Attorney General has not issued a Section 7 of the New Zealand Bill of Rights report on this bill. And so it seems to have been clear. <laughs> Yes, we want New Zealand smoke-free, Mr Speaker. Of course I support the amelioration of harmful tobacco. However, I, I oppose this bill 
for the propositions I've outlined, and I welcome it going to a select committee. Barbara Stewart. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On behalf of New Zealand First, I rise to speak to the tobacco plan packaging amendment.